welcome everyone back again to our pirate campaign where I believe we're up to the magical episode number five. So you've all survived so far. There has been some close calls. There has been some not so close calls. <laughs> there has been some very entertaining moments. When last we left you, you had successfully captured a brig that had attempted to attack the Argonaut. Uh, you managed to fight off the slavers. You had Bingo Port slip down into the hold and blow the ship up, or attempt to blow the ship up. Sorry. And you had a couple of events occur, such as Taryn finding a journal and a map. Yes. And you had a letter handed off to Edric. <laughs> and yes, Edric, uh, you nearly wound up with no boat to be sitting on. <laughs> I prefer having a boat. I concur. That all said and done, Bajiri named your ship and organized a little shindig nowhere near as impressive as the one that you had at the tavern when the dwarves first dropped up something to do with the alcohol being blown off the ship but you had a little bit of a party and yes Bajiri named the ship the Cirrus like, I was literally just scrolling up trying to find that <laughs> Uh, someone did mention that it sounded like a lemon. It's a citrus. <laughs> it shall be painted yellow. <laughs> so that's what you've recently been up to as a crew. You got the engines working. Bingo proceeded to not blow the ship up a second time. Yay. That said and done. Um, you've got the ship... Moving, you're on your way to Port Mali, where you are going to regroup with the Argonaut and the captain that first hired you, and find out what the plan is from there. So, you've gone about your tasks as a crew, you've begun the repairs to the ship, and started to get into the rhythm of what it's like being on an airship as a cohesive crew. The more experienced members have been showing you the ropes and even some of the refugees on board have been pitching in. <coughs> Sorry, my phone's just gone to sleep and it's got all my notes on it. Um, As the day is starting to come to a close, I will have those of you who want to be above deck, I'm going to presume that some of you are going to be enjoying your time in the armory and engine room. <laughs> um, so anyone who wants to be above deck as a character, I'll get you to roll a perception. So, who's above deck and wandering around tasks? Yep, so it'll just be a straight perception and seeing if you got it. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. I rolled three ones. I. I am going to enjoy this. Balls there. Okay. Well, Merisia is like pootling around up on the deck trying to be useful, but um, yeah, I'll leave that up to you. (laughs) 
So <laughs> we've got Hannibal and we got Pajiri. Um I will Yeah. I'll explain what happens to Miracia while all the others who are doing their perception rolls roll. Um, Mercy, you're running around trying to be as helpful as possible and yep. you're in such a flustered rush, you actually miss that there is some rigging stretched out and you coat hanging yourself <laughs> as you're running around and literally go flying. Okay. Um, not, not, not off the ship, right? <laughs> uh, not completely off the ship, no. <laughs> You're currently staring at a whole bunch of deck and not an awful lot else. So you're going to kind of shake a head, you know, cartoon style, <laughs> quickly look around and see if anyone had looked. But I was I was just testing the rigging, everyone. I just I was testing the rigging. Um, it, it's secure. It's very secure. It's wonderful. Good job, whoever put the rigging there. It was lovely. <laughs> uh, Bajiri and Taran... You've definitely seen this, and anyone else who's above deck and has rolled higher than a 16. What you see as you glance out on a vid the horizon is little flashes of light and a darkening patch of sky that is getting larger and wider as you look at it. Bajiri, you know exactly what it is, as you've seen this before. There is an incoming sandstorm, and it looks big, and it looks nasty, and it is kicking up lightning sparks everywhere as well. In that case, Bajiri is going to shout to the crew, uh, batten down the hatches, uh, and if you're not going to be sailing, then get below deck. The crew, especially the experienced crew, take one look at the captain, look where he's looking, and immediately leap into action. Some of the... Refugees are a little bit clueless, but they just get herded down below. The crew start coming back up, and they are carrying with them cloth headpieces and goggles, which they start passing out left, right, and centre, um, and throwing on themselves. So all of you above deck will wind up with effectively a cloth overlay to protect yourself and some very well-used goggles to protect your eyes. Um, you see some of the crew start pulling out ropes, which they quickly hook onto their belt harnesses and... <laughs> Just read that, Adric. <laughs> and they start securing anything that's loose on deck and either getting it down below or getting it fastened and preparing for the storm. Up ahead, you can see that the Argonaut is a absolute hive of activity as well. It looks like they've also seen the incoming storm. The only other thing, Bajiri, that you also have seen is that ahead of you in your current uh, route is large stone columns that tower out of the sands below and as high as the ships are currently sailing. As your eyes fall on that, the medical officer who is currently manning the helm uh, gestures in their direction and says... The Pillars of Autumn are going to be an uh, absolute bitch to navigate at this time. If that storm catches us in amongst them, we will have to be very careful. Bajiri's going to inquire as to how far around um, everything is. Like, as in to get... How, how much out of course would we go if we had to go around? 
Neros thinks for a bit and goes, it would add an extra day or two to our journey, and more importantly, it's likely to take us well and truly away from the Argonaut. At this stage, as risky it is, it, as it is, I doubt it's a good idea to split up from the other vessel. They've got far more firepower, and they've taken far less damage than this ship. Okay, Bajir is going to nod, and he's going to He's going to let the Argonaut take the lead on going through the pillars uh, in hopes of following the vessel as best as they can. You see that they've started to set lights up on deck to try and allow a tailing ship to keep track of them. Um, some of your crew have already begun to do the same by putting them up. And given a few more minutes worth of activity the storm starts to hit it starts with very very fine dust that sweeps over with a howling wind that starts buffeting the crew and the ship about and then gets rougher and rougher until you can barely see and hear over the howling wind the lightning is cracking all around the ship occasionally lightning lighting up ahead of you just enough to faintly make out the Argonaut or Pillars. And with that, uh, Bajiri, are you going to be taking the helm or is Neros going to still be on there? Uh, Bajiri will take the helm for this one. Yep. So I will get you to do a sailing check, which I believe was dexterity sailing off the top of my head. That is correct. Oh boy, that is a 12, 13, 14, 15, uh, 15 with five stunt points to, uh, to be more specific. Right, yo. Well, you definitely passed that one, so you can use your stunt points if you wish, but they're not strictly necessary. Your You've seen these kinds of storms before. You've ridden them out in even tougher conditions. You're able to guide the ship around the pillars in such a way that they they block the incoming wind and dust at moments, allowing you to have like split seconds of opportunity to sort of glance ahead to try and make out where the Argonaut is going and with practice you keep tailing the Argonaut along and stick as close as you feel safe throughout the storm. It goes on like this for a good 30 to 45 minutes before the storm starts to blow itself out and after a f few more minutes, probably like only two more after that, it blows out all at once and you are left sailing with a once more clear sky, the storm passing off onto the other side of the ship and the deck is an absolute mess of sand and dust and crew that look like they've literally just been diving into sand dunes headfirst. Bajiri's going to look around and be like, that went well. Um, and he's going to call for the crew to uh, get start getting this cleared up, make sure that the, uh, the, the people that we've taken captive earn their keep. The crew start immediately cracking out brooms to start pushing the sand off the side of the ship. The captured prisoners that you have on board come up, take one look at the deck. You see them sort of slouch a little bit as uh, with this look of, we just fucking clean this. Um, <laughs> and then they just get back to work. <laughs> up ahead, you can but still you, make out... Also going to, uh, he, he's also going to make sure that they do a head count, making sure no one's just like got dusted off the side of the ship somehow. 
you do a head count of the crew as they're passing around um, at their tasks. To your best of your ability, it looks like everyone's made it through perfectly fine. You're making double sure that Merisi is not fallen off the ship, haven't you? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's fine. I'm just checking. She, yeah, she's covered in fucking sand, but she's there. She's fine, probably. She's still hanging from the rigging. <laughs> <laughs> she's got one ankle like hooked in the rigging, just like I just, I was just checking it again. It's it, it's still fine. It's fine, everybody. It's wonderful. It's fine. The Argonauts ahead. It seems to have made its way through the storm just as safely. And the path ahead is clear of what looks like any further clouds or storms. Neros nods at you, Bajirian, goes, that was some very skillful flying, Captain. We could have uh, been in bad shape if the ship hadn't held together enough to get us through there. I've, uh, I've, I've experienced worse. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> he raises an eyebrow ever so slightly and just gives you a slight smile. <laughs> <laughs> In the meantime, Bingo and Edric, did you spend most of that sandstorm below decks or did you stick your head above? I spent most of my time below decks and then started complaining about the dust that was going through the creeks in the floor <laughs> because it got in the guns that I had just cleaned. And that's the point where I go upstairs and go like, guys, could you stop with the... God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Fair enough. Bingo, you've been in the engine room having an absolute ball of a time loading up the furnaces with coal and watching the boilers pumping out steam that has kept this ship moving at the entire time. As you've been doing it, though, you've noticed that the noises that the boiler's been making has been growing in pitch just ever so slightly over the course of the storm. And even though it's past, it's just creeping up and up and up. You've heard similar noises before, and usually they're followed by explosions. <laughs> Can I get you to roll an intelligence engineering check? Is that me as well? Uh, currently, that's Bingo, unless Bingo wants to go and grab some help. Oh, actually, Has she come back? She went to go on the phone. Maybe she's not. Ah, right. Sorry, I had not even seen that. We will. Sorry, I didn't realize she hadn't come back. All good. I hadn't seen the message. I will skip bingo for now, and just someone nudge me when she's back and available, and I will get back to that. Will do. In the meantime. I'll skip to that bit. You've been sailing for the better part of the afternoon and the crew have cleaned most of the deck and gotten the ship as pretty much in working order as you can possibly get it considering that there's still some fairly hefty holes in the side and some damage that needs the hands of someone a little bit more professional than just the carpenter that's probably on board in amongst the refugees. Um, you've gotten into the rhythm of sailing. You've had Taryn cook the first meal of uh, the afternoon without poisoning anyone unless someone wants to roll a constitution check just for laughs. Um, and the day seems to be getting better.
you find that something's going to go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you find yourselves now with a bit of time to get to know both the older crewmates who were to be your original crew companions. Um, and some of them are more than a little curious about these new crew members that have made such an impact to the Argonaut. And you have others such as the soldiers who joined your crew uh, back in Freeport who are now finding themselves with a bit more free time on their hands and are now happily chatting on deck. So I will leave it to anyone who wants to actually start either finding out a bit more about their companions or poking around at stuff they might have collected along the top way. Idrik will join on uh, top deck now and he'll carry with him a rifle like that's not his because his is over the shoulder and a cleaning set and he'll just sit on the deck cleaning this gun. <laughs> One of the soldiers who fought with you up on the wall gives a respectful nod. A nod back. <laughs> is it me or is it silent? <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I think Tara would probably just um, shuffle onto the deck. See everyone's kind of just sort of sitting and chatting, and he'll kind of sidle up to a group, sit down, and just kind of sit there silently waiting <laughs> or hoping to eventually join in. <laughs> One of the sailors you sit down next to recognizes you from the fighting and nudges one of his companions this is the one that scared all those soldiers back up onto the wall <laughs> Tara's just going to blush and duck his head <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen anyone get so fired up and get so many men to go back and do their duty He's going to kind of uh, turn his head, smile shyly and say, um, th <clears throat> thank you, thank you, uh, yeah. <laughs> you hear a grunt from the other side of you and a quick glance reveals it's actually one of the soldiers that jumped off the other ship to join you in the fighting and he's just grinning despite the mockery and just says, we were getting people out just like you were. That said... Oh, sorry, what, carry on. <laughs> it's like, that said, yeah, the lad did the right thing. And... Uh, yeah, yeah, he did, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he claps Taryn on the shoulder and goes, on a fighting assault alongside you. <laughs> on the claps on the shoulder, Taryn, like falls forward and has to quickly shuffle himself back up and um, just just blushes and gets very, very nervous. <laughs> the original sailor pulls out a hip flask, takes a swig and then holds it out to Taryn. Oh, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> he takes a big glug and then immediately spits it back out and coughs up a lung. <laughs> that gets most of them laughing. The soldier parks himself down and looks at you, Taryn, and goes, I know many who have taken up on ships, but what got one as young as you on this vessel? Uh, Taryn looks up with really big scared eyes and goes, uh, 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 Adventure? 
the one with the hip flux laughs and goes, you're going to find a lot of that with us. Taryn just nods to go again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, uh, I hope so. <laughs> well, the way you fight, you're not going to have any trouble. Oh, uh, thank, thank you. <laughs> that said, you also cook some good grub. I'm looking forward to being on this ship. Oh well, that uh, that I have confidence in. Uh, I, I can I can definitely cook. I wish the chef on the Argonaut could do the same. It's always a gamble on whether you're going to be seeing the chef or the freaking medic. <laughs> I quite like medicine too. That that was fun uh, patching up uh, uh, that um, the passenger. Oh, having a spare medic on board is definitely not going to be looked down upon. We slave us one minute or be pirates the next. I hope uh, the medic uh, uh, approves as well. Uh, he uh, he uh, tends to face palm a lot. Not not so much with me, but uh, I've seen him do it quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> the sailor grins and goes, that one has opinions. <laughs> and very, very high ones. <laughs> but... Regardless of his attitude, he's a very, very good bone saw, and he knows how to put a man back together with most of his parts still together. Oh, I, will. I hope I'll learn something then. Oh, you'll learn. Hopefully with not as many face palms as you've seen him doing. <laughs> I hope so too. <laughs> Just jump back on the heat. Yep. In the meantime, <laughs> so exactly what would happen. <laughs> Mercia, the Medical officer has been on board with you long enough that he face palms just at the thought of you doing stuff, and it's usually comically timed at just about the same time something happened. <laughs> um, was this the same guy that kept face palming when she was trying to sign up for things? It is the exact same medical officer. Oh my god, they're going to become best friends soon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but but that lonely be because he's the medic, so whenever you fall and break something. He's the one patching you up. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. potentially, potentially, the captain could assign uh, Mercia to him to like shadow him and to learn. Uh, that would be very entertaining. So, yeah. Bajiri. He does want to learn as many things as possible, so, you know. You currently know that you've got the gunnery position at least one engineer in your engine room and you've got Taryn who's offered to help the medic but you do have some of the your original companions that haven't been assigned any other specific tasks other than just to help around the ship Mug is currently below decks and has been helping reorganize everything that had been bowled over by the explosion mainly due to the ability to be just hauling extremely heavily objects around. Wisp and Mericea. Well, Wisp has been shadowing some of the crew and learning everything from tying the knots of the various bits and pieces of rope and rigging that are holding either the balloon in place or allow the crew to navigate up onto the balloon for repairs. Um, Mericea, you've been attempting to shadow the crew, but every now and again, you're either getting caught in the rigging or tripping over something. <laughs> uh, well, Mericea's job on the Argonaut was to uh, basically keep inventory, right? Mm -hmm. so... Originally, yes. The Argonaut... 
in its main um, part was meant to be a trade ship, although they left the vast majority of their cargo behind in favour of refugees. Miracia was meant to be the one managing the inventory of both food, gunpowder, water, and any trade goods they happen to have on board. Oops, sorry, say again. Uh, my connection dropped for a second. Um, Miracia was supposed to be in charge of the food, the water, um, any weapons and munitions that needed to be topped up, so the gunpowder and the cannonballs or whatnot. Um, as well as any trade goods, um, which currently, as far as you're aware, this ship doesn't have any trade goods on it, and the Argonaut left most of it behind in favour of the refugees. Okay, well, uh, B Bajiri is going to... S since it's a job that Mercy is confident she can do, um, Bajiri is going to put her in charge of... Taking stock, keeping inventory, telling us when the food's going to run out and we're going to starve to death. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mauricia, you go below deck after receiving your task and mm -hmm. find yourself in the main part of the hold. Mug is there reorganizing stuff as uh, a bunch of sailors. It looks like they've moved most of what they could salvage from the explosion up to one end of the vessel. Um, something that does catch your eyes is that there's two very large chests, one of them that is wide open and filled with silver. Oh. And... Of the remaining cargo, it looks like the vast majority of it appears to either be rations or barrels of what appear to be water. <clears throat> what um, <laughs> she'd probably have a bit of a poke around. Um, she probably wouldn't be that interested in the silver. Like She's come from a family where there's been lots of money, so she's trying to distance herself from money. <laughs> um, but yeah, she'd be interested. She'd be like trying to make sure that she knows every single thing on the ship, just in case anybody asks. She'll like know the answer. <laughs> she's probably yeah. She's probably like bartered a, a notepad or some like parchment or something from someone and is like writing down every detail that she possibly can. With a bit of math, you work out that you've got at least just enough rations to get you all the way to Port Marley, presuming that you don't have any delays. Cool. She'll keep an eye on things and make sure... Oh, I was going to say make sure Varric doesn't get there, but that's a different game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I <Oops>. love that. <laughs> Just so used to it. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, Idrik will actually try and find Percy at some point, as he knows mm -hmm. she got that job. And he, like, go, so, I took inventory for you of everything we have in the armory. And then he'd just start listing it all from the top of his head. Like, there's this many uh, pistols, there's this many rifles. <laughs> um, she's going to frantically try and write everything down and make it seem like she's keeping up and this is, this is totally not too much information all at once. <laughs> you know, she can do this job, she can do this job, it's, it's going to be great. Uh, also, is she taking like random scribbles at some point if it becomes too much <laughs> yeah just like drawing like she also probably wouldn't know what half of the things are that you're talking about probably. so she's like making up spellings she's making like words that are like just one word into three separate words because she just has no clue <laughs> like if anybody reads this back it's it won't make much sense I imagine Arkebus is on the list as like R uh, bus, like that. <laughs> like a child would write it. <laughs> and if she draws any pictures, they're not of the things that they actually are. She's like, oh, that sounds like food. Quick, draw food. <laughs> do, do, do not draw food at the gunpowder. Just one quick <laughs> suggestion there. They are not spices that should be near open fire. <laughs> 
That is a very entertaining thought. <laughs> uh -oh. It should or should not be near near fire. To, th there is one other thing that Idrik will mention to her. Like, mm -hmm. Is this below deck by any chance? Yeah. Okay, so Idrik will make sure that there's like no crew around. And he go, so you look vaguely familiar. Have I seen you before? Like before the tavern? Oh, do you know, I think I think you look rather familiar to me too. There's something about that that big beard thing that you have. Um but I feel like I've seen you from a painting or something similar hanging on a, a big wall somewhere. Are you are you well known by any chance? I um uh... Me, personally, well... No. Oh. He, he will look, like, very doubting as to what to say, very carefully picking his words. Is, is it a family beard, by any chance? Well, um... I'm not entirely sure on that one. Oh. I see, I think. Do you not have family? No. Oh, oh gosh, oh, I'm, I'm ever so sorry. Um, what a dolt I am. Don't worry, don't worry. For um, a pretty lady such as yourself, I can forgive it. <laughs> She's going to look completely baffled. Oh, oh, gosh, thank you, um, lovely. Um, so, uh, what brings you on this jolly adventure? Are you trying to find family? Well, in part, and also, well, pilots are kind of cool, so I decided to start sailing. Oh gosh, are we pirates now? No, we're not pirates yet. I <sighs> think. That would be rather fun to write home about, I have to say. Well, where, where are you from? Um, my player can't remember the exact name right now, and I'm in the wrong room to find all of my uh, information. <laughs> so I'm just going to bullshit something. Uh, Mum and me. Daddy, uh, they own a, a wonderful castle. Insert name here. Um, <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> since it's actually come up, I will message you <laughs> because this needs to come out at some point. Now's better than ever. <laughs> Hooray. Um, uh oh. <laughs> oh, by the way, one thing that I'm going to notice out of character to everybody here. Okay. Idrik, Idrik, Edric, whatever, he changes the way he pronounces his name every single time. It's never the same. Oh. Ooh. Aha! <laughs> I'm doing that like, but I'll, I'll, I'll send a gif. <laughs> I like how we support noises with gifs. <laughs> <laughs> so I've just messaged you the details. Uh huh. Mm hmm. <laughs> Uh-huh. So that's where I'm from. <laughs> yep. So, so, so Vicky is okay. doing literally the same Mr. Burns meme. Oh, I can't see the meme. I'm on my phone. Okay, okay, okay. How do you pronounce it? Ginnereth. Ginnereth, okay. So did did you mention that, like, location to Edric? Um, I'm going to ask a couple of questions, if I may. So it, it when it says the king and the queen... Are they human? Are they elf? Is that mummy and daddy? Like, I can't remember what I'd give you. Uh, those are the leaders of that particular place. Um, okay. But you would know of them. Okay. Um, lovely. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Um, uh, sorry, Idrik, I, uh, I went away then. Um, I'm from Ginnereth. Uh, do you know it? 
I've heard of it before. Oh, it's a lovely place. Um, Mummy and Daddy have got a lovely castle in the woods. Um, I, mm, I decided I needed some time away, and um, they perhaps also decided that. <laughs> you kind of see that she just goes quiet for a minute and glazes over. Edric will try to keep a straight face. <laughs> Um, uh, sorry. Uh, so yes, so, so here I am now. Um, did, did you say where you came from? Sorry, I seem to be talking an awful lot. <laughs> D don't worry at all. I quite enjoy the conversations, so. Um, well, I'm... I'm of nowhere, actually, but be before that, I used to live quite a lavish life. Somewhere else. So you're of nowhere, but have come from somewhere? Yeah, if that makes sense. Not particularly, but it's all rather mysterious, isn't it? Um, where was this somewhere that you mentioned? Um, well, I don't know if you've heard much of it. And what I'm going to tell you is very, 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 very important that you tell nobody. Uh, I'll make sure I don't write it down in my notebook. Go on. I, well, I, I used to live in a little place called Becare. Does she have a glimmer of recognition across her face? It would depend on how much you would have learned from other northern kingdoms, but they would be fairly close to your own, so there is a fair chance. Oh, yes, I know. Uh, Daddy talked about it quite a lot when he went on his uh, trading missions. So she... Yeah. What's that helicopter? I thought it was the predator. <laughs> but that is a much more dangerous suggestion. I'd already grabbed my Kirby figure to protect me. Uh, I have a pygmy to pr protect me. A pygmy top. <laughs> I have no idea what that was. Are you guys hearing something that I can't hear? Well, I, I like heard a, a helicopter weird... predator thing. Yeah, it was like oh. a... Yeah, I don't know what... Yeah, that's probably the best way to describe it. <laughs> <Very> strange. <laughs> Regardless, it seems to have stopped, so... Yeah. yeah. Someone murdered it. Okay. I apologise if it was me. I'm currently <laughs> sorting out tights, so I don't think it was me, but... Um, and you lived here lavishly, you say. Are you of uh, royal uh, lineage as well? I wouldn't necessarily say royal, but... Well, no, I suppose I'm not really royal, not like king and queen royal, but, you know, within our little community, we were... Con oh, shit, I just hear a cat. Um, we were... <laughs> we can... Sorry. <laughs> 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 As I'm doing the voice of Merithea, I'm like <laughs> flapping around and my cat just full pelt ran into my hand and I've just punched him in the face. Oh. 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 It's okay, he's now immediately climbed into my underwear drawer and is now making a nest, so he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid cat. A small um, black fur uh, fluffball has just bolted across the <laughs> hold and is hiding in amongst the... Um, barrels. You have no <laughs> idea what it was, but it hit oh. you it hit you in the leg hard. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, uh, just bear with me a moment. She gets a notebook out and writes it down like uh, small furry, something hit me in the leg, uh, in the barrels, full stop. Um, <laughs> sorry, do, do go on about your lavish life and how <laughs> wonderful it was. Well, 
my mother used to wait glenn correct me if i'm wrong because i keep messing up the like <laughs> which yep family tree and such the mother was the noble in the yep. care right yep okay, okay in that case he'll go well my, my mother had some influence with the leadership in the care but yeah i guess that makes me noble but and anyway that, that that's gone was... <laughs> what was her name pray tell her name yes well that would be another one of those highly classified things she oh bagathal oh do you know i think i do know that name they were quite well spoken of i think father traded with them quite often so you're saying i may have met your father uh potentially tall elf-like man uh you know kind of silverish hair very regal looking not much of a sense of humor uh doesn't like it when his daughter gets drunk um uh yes that that sort of chap quite fine clothing <clears throat> Well, um, I may have, yeah, I, I think I may have seen him before in the keep, but ah, that that's all past anyway. Um, rem remember that lady that we saw that that was on the ship when we first arrived at the Argonaut? Uh, yes, I believe I know. Well, there's a reason why I shot the guy that was with her on site. Oh. Uh, dare I ask why? Well, if anybody finds out that I am alive, that might mean that I don't have long left. <laughs> oh. So they, they, they don't really like me back home. Are you some sort of outlaw? Have you done something dangerous? <laughs> well, it was not necessarily me who did anything wrong, but... Turns out dad's a bit of a scumbag. Oh. Oh. Gosh, mine's just rather annoying. What's yours done? Well, um, he had an affair with my mother. And then, well, there I was. <laughs> oh. A nefarious <laughs> fellow, was he? To be fair, I, I don't know much more than this, so at this point, I think so. So why are you wanted dead? Just for being his son? You had a family, like my mother's actual husband. They, they got a child and then, well, I was overdue, basically. So I was carefully disposed of. Oh. Oh. That's dreadful. I survived, so it's all right. And now I'll uh, come back with a vengeance at some point. Vengeance does sound rather fun. And uh, I can't say I've tried it before. So, you know, if you need a hand, I'm getting the, the hand of this adventuring lark. And she, like, flaps her hand around and flings a notebook across the floor accidentally. <laughs> he'll actually go to pick it up for her and then he'll go I think it'd be good to have someone on my side uh, jolly kid pirates to the oh no we're not pirates yet are we <laughs> sailors to the end something we need a chant <laughs> yeah I guess we do <laughs> he'll, he'll snicker to himself and like take the, ca the, the keg off his backpack and hand her the keg so that she can take a sip of that uh, meat from it. <laughs> can I Sheila. get you both to do a perception check, by the way? Uh-oh. <laughs> nice. Oh, shit, I just got tangled. <laughs> uh... Oh, 
Oh, we leveled up, didn't we? Bum, I didn't level up. Oh, well. Wasn't it after this Yeah, session? it'll be after this session. Oh, we haven't leveled up yet. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, six. So 13 for me. Right, Edric, you hear absolutely nothing. <laughs> Mercia, you hear purring come from over near the barrels. Coming from where, sorry, you cut out. You hear purring coming from over near the barrels. <gasps> <laughs> Gracious. I wonder, I wonder what our cargo is doing. Uh, I will go over and have a look at what's going on. Did she say what our car cargo is doing? It, yeah, did... can you not hear the strange noises? What strange noises? <laughs> In here, look! And goes to where the purring noise is. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a little bit of searching, but you move some of the... <laughs> <laughs> You, you move some of the barrels out of the way and you find amongst that a small black kitten. Oh, oh my God. Um, oh. She is overcome with absolute joy, but then stops herself and is like, no, no, job first, job first. Finds her notebook, puts a little correction next to the, the small black blob notes and puts kitten. Uh, <laughs> Then puts the notebook away. <laughs> oh gosh, uh, Edric, there's there's a little kitty cat down here. She would like to attempt to pick up the kitten, please. The kitten doesn't offer too much resistance. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just caught up with the chat then. I like the, uh, <laughs> the guns are alive with the sound of music. Um, she is going to spend the next however long she can get away with before anybody needs her again playing with a kitten. How like is it like a runny aroundy like scampery kind of kitten? Oh yeah, it ran across the room, didn't it? Yep. Um, yeah, she's she's gonna play with a kitten for a little while because I feel other people should play. <laughs> 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 right, yo. Um, Bingo's not returned yet, so I will pass on that and then take us up to So it started to get dark. Some of the crew have slipped below decks to make themselves comfy and get some rest. Oh. <laughs> 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 um, and the medic who is stepping in for the chief officer is, has sort of put together a bit of a roster of when people should be up and working and when they should be sleeping, since you kind of need at least a partial crew around 24 hours. Um, those that are well and truly into their rest uh, heading down below the rest of you go about your tasks and everything seems to be chugging along fine um, <laughs> I love the cat giving the sound effects <laughs> there is a sound coming from below decks that sounds an awful lot like a kitten playing um, the Night rolls in, you see the lights still up ahead of the Argonaut, um, and all seems well, well. Some of you eventually get tapped on the shoulder to take watches, just to keep an eye out for potentially any other ships or anything else that needs to be taken care of. So... The order of the roster I'll actually leave to Bajiri you'll need four volunteers to do a rotating ro watch across the night okay well conveniently um, Bajiri's aware that Taran w 
in, in their first battle, Taran seemed to be quite a good spotter. So Taran is the first yep. person uh, who he's going to ask. And he's not going to order at this point, because he's going to ask just to make sure that, that people are comfortable with the whole stressful situation that they've all been in. <laughs> <laughs> when asked, Taran's just going to look at him and go, what, what do I need to do, sorry? <laughs> Uh, what oh, what does uh, that entail? Just, just keep watch, make sure that no big ship decides to come and try and kill us. Just the, just the usual. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I can, I can do that. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Good, I, I'm, I'm trusting you to do that. And he gives Taron a, a, a pat on the back, um, want, wanting them to be more confident. And then for the other three volunteers, he's, he's going to ask if anyone on the crew wants to volunteer. Just for pure entertainment, can Flaley McFlaley be one? <laughs> Flaley McFlaley sort of waits to see if anyone else puts their hand up first. And then begrudgingly puts his hand up. <laughs> but but Jerry's going to like gun fingers to him and be like, good choice. I was going to pick you next anyways. <laughs> I just love the idea of a jury doing gun things. <laughs> Flaley's shoulders sag just ever so slightly at that. <laughs> then uh, if... He's got, uh, Bajiri's also going to take one of the watches himself, and he'll suggest Wisp uh, for the which, whichever uh, watch they choose. Yep. So, Happy. with that sorted out, both of the crew start to go and get some rest. There's a couple of them still doing the tasks that need 100% maintenance all the time so there's someone in the engine room at all time, it will be either Bingo or someone lending a hand um, and there's someone always up on the helm steering but for the bulk of it, most of the crew go to get some shut-eye that said Mercia, uh sorry, Mercy is below deck Taryn can I actually get you to <laughs> roll a perception scene check Okay, uh, let me just add that up, sorry, six, uh, three is nine, plus what's my perception? <coughs> there, two is twelve, plus two is fourteen. Right, yeah. So you make the rounds of the ship, sort of checking everything, looking out over the sides for any signs of anything at all. Most of what you see is darkness. There's not an awful lot of exciting things to stare at. It gets yep. boring pretty quickly. Yep. However, as you look out in front of you, you notice the lights of the Argonaut. You can see the two main lights they've got up on the deck to indicate where it is. Mm -hmm. You also notice a smaller, fainter light that's below them, roughly where the cabin or at least the captain's cabin might be. And it's flashing. Oh. Does Taryn know if this is normal or not? You can't quite tell, but it doesn't appear normal. As far as you know, the... The lights on your ship haven't been set up the same way as that. And you presume that the both crews would be doing the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I'm assuming at this point everyone else has gone to sleep and is below deck. Most have gone to sleep, yeah. Okay. Is there anybody I could flag to go and catch the captain for me? Or, like, flag him down? You can't really see anyone on deck. You do know that there is a sailor that's up on the helm, but he is currently still guiding the ship following the Argonaut. Um, there's no one else up on deck among, apart from them, and you're not sure how many below deck might still be awake. Okay, um, so Taryn's going to be a bit flustered, not really sure what to do. 
thinks it's worth letting somebody know, obviously, just in case something's wrong. So he's going to do that thing where he goes to tell him and then he goes back to his position because he's not sure if he should leave and then goes to tell him again and then goes backwards and forwards a few times whilst deciding what's the best course of action. Eventually, he decides that if he's going to go tell the captain, he needs to do it quickly. So he legs it to the captain's uh, quarters uh, and like knocks on the door and he's like, Captain! 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 Until Bajiri opens the door. Bajiri is like, he, he's up very quickly. Door swinging open and is, is something the matter? Are we getting attacked? Uh, no, but um, it's just, it's a, it's a, a little weird, I think. Um, from what I can see of the Argonaut, the, the captain, where the, I think the captain uh, room is, it's the lights flashing? Is that, is that normal? Um, as in, how, what sort of flashing? Is it like a flash, 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 long flash, long flash, long flash sort of dealio, or...? Just, but Jerry's gonna just like walk out and like walk up deck and <laughs> and have a look. Tara's just gonna follow after him. Like, um, <laughs> you make follow along and hopes of finding something out. You make your way back up to the front of the ship, and sure enough, Bajiri, you know notice the light straight away and you also notice that it makes no logical sense for a light like that to be flashing on the ship you are almost certain it's a message of some sort Bajiri's gonna write down like he doesn't know Morse code at all but he's aware that it exists and he's just gonna write <laughs> down to see if there's some sort of pattern and he's gonna ask Taran to get someone smart <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> Uh, who who would Taryn consider, consider smart? Bingo. <coughs> Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> um, in which case, Taryn's going to run towards the engine room, which I'm assuming is where Bingo will still be. Uh, <laughs> I like how you actually picked the XP gnome or uh, goblin. <laughs> well, I, he, Taryn really doesn't know. <laughs> um, and he's going to basically go around all the people he knows um, to see if can, anybody knows Morse code, because that's what the captain's told him to look for. I think we're missing a bingo at the moment. Yeah, she just sent a message saying it be ten minutes. Yep. One of the soldiers sort of grumpily wakes up, but at the mention of code, shrugs and goes, I could see if it's a signaler from Freeport, but if it's not, I'm not going to know it any better than anyone else. If it's a code, you need to know what the code's in to know the answer. <laughs> okay, in which case it's going to suddenly occur to Taryn that he's going to need to find somebody who knows the the captain of all Argonauts, so he's going to go. I can't remember the what's the face palming elf's name. <laughs> so, Mirror's tail feather, right? Yep. Yeah. Oh wow, you remembered it. Well thing. done, you. Very this, this is why I don't make notes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's going to go find did. him. Neros raises an eyebrow, but nods and heads on over to where Bajiri is standing and looks out at the Argonaut. He's initially not saying very much, but he is studying the light very hard. Eventually, he okay. is going to turn around to Bajiri and say, it is certainly a code of sorts, but it is not one that's been used on the Argonaut before. Very curious. Hmm... Perhaps we should get a little closer and just not scout it out, but just have a look to see if something's happening. It's maybe worth it, as long as the code continues to go. And he frowns slightly and he goes, It might be... If we only we had someone from Picard on the ship, we might be able to decipher it from here. 
The only other person I could think of that's in that cabin would have been that girl that came on board. Well, I suppose we should see whether she is awake and willing. And Vajir is going to stroll down uh, into the... Well, stroll down into the ship to try and find them. Well, the the lady he talked about is on the Argon Argonaut. Probably signaling the light. So... Uh, maybe Taryn thinks of Merisia or something to go and get her, because um, she's different from some, obviously from somewhere different. He goes <laughs> to get Merisia um, and asks if she's from Bacard. And um, hopefully Merisia might say something. <laughs> <laughs> um, Merisia is not from that place, but she'd be very glad to come and try and help. Of course she would. <laughs> <laughs> Super helpful she is. <laughs> she would have no fucking clue what she's doing, but she would jump at the chance. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I thought I'd help you out here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, she takes a minute, obviously, playing with the kitten. Um, so have you mentioned? Uh, yeah, so uh, when Taryn goes goes to see if she's from Bacard, he does mention Bacard and he goes, you wouldn't by any chance. Um, <clears throat> you wouldn't uh, be be from Bacard, would you by any chance? Uh, no, darling, sorry. I'm, I'm from somewhere nearby there. It's much nicer. Um, but do you know... That uh, beardy chap, uh, Edric, Edric, his, 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 what's his face, from nowhere. Um, he mentioned Bacard. I'm not oh, sure oh. where he's sleeping, though. Oh, um, um, I just have, uh, I'll try the armory. I'll, uh, but, th but thank you, thank you. Um, I've got a kitten soon. now. Oh, okay, bye. Oh, oh okay, um, thank you for <laughs> telling me, I think. Um, <laughs> bye. <laughs> 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 run away slightly confused <laughs> and just go to the armory <laughs> to see if Edric's there. Uh, he's going to knock on the door um, and wait for an answer. Edric's going to open the door and then uh, go. Um, uh, hello. Um, uh, I was uh, uh, talking to Maricia and um, we were. She, I asked if she was from Bacard, but she said she wasn't. And she said um, she knew somebody from Bacard, and she mentioned that it might be you. Idrik is glaring daggers right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'll go. Taryn's a little terrified. <laughs> the, then he'll go. What's wrong? Um, Slowly. I just woke up. Okay, sorry, sorry. Um, well, I was on my watch and I saw flashing lights and I went to the captain yeah. and then I went to the medical officer and then I went to a soldier and then I went to Maricia, Um and then she told me to come to you because the medical officer thinks it's some sort of code from Bacard, and you're the only person we know from Bacard. <laughs> Can you help? Well, I, I can always <laughs> try, I guess. That, that would be <clears throat> really, really helpful. Um, could you come up to the deck? That does make it easier to see. <laughs> of course. So first, before he goes, he's like not wearing his thick leather jacket that he normally wears. And he quickly grabs his pistol and his gun, slings the gun over the shoulder, holsters the pistol, and then he walks up. 
Karen's just going to kind of sheepishly follow him or lead him. I, I'm not sure which, but just kind of hover around him as he goes up to the deck. <laughs> <laughs> as you get up on deck, you see that the captain and the medical officer are both standing up the front looking out towards the Argonaut. Following their gaze, you do see the light flash a couple of times, and then it goes dark. So, where's this light you're talking about? I only see, like, a little bit there, but it's gone. Bajiri, Bajiri points at the deck, which he has now scratched in, like, every single... <laughs> <laughs> he scratched in the pattern into one of the planks on the deck. <laughs> Lich every single one from when he's been up there to now. <laughs> he's he's just looking at, at Edric as he's pointing, and he's just like, just scratching his face, just like a bit, just idly, just like, hmm. I mean, okay, so. And then he's going to turn his gaze to the code and try to decipher it, I guess? Yeah, roll a communication with advantage. I am so glad that I got advantage. <laughs> ah, that's way better. So that's... There's 10 points in communication. How much was that? Are there stunt points in communication? Um, you will <laughs> be able to do a roleplay stunt where you can, off the top of my head, use a focus that you don't currently have. I'd, I'd have 12 for stunts, and if I could pour all of those stunts into that roleplay thing to give me the focus that I might need. Yep. That would be plus two, right? So then 14 total. Yep. You can okay, use that. I, I did that. Awesome. So you stare at it for a good long time. And then it slowly comes to you that you've seen something similar to it before. In books that you were forced to read when you were younger. <laughs> it's an old Bacard military code. One that's no longer publicly used. Um, due to the fact that it is being superseded by ones that are not as well published. The message reads in very, very broken language as the code seems to have been shortened for simplicity. Do not trust. And then it says a little bit of gibberish that seems to not make sense until you realize it's it stands for h as in it's it's a replacement for a word that doesn't actually exist in the code and then begatal oh something like that Yep. <clears throat> Edric will look at the code a little bit longer than he actually needs to understand it, even though it already mm -hmm. took time. And he'd go, hmm.
something about not trusting some because this word is trust and this is not that's what he says out loud to everybody around him the medical officer raises an eyebrow and looks back towards the Argonaut and frowns I assume it's the lady that's in there. And I would find it very interesting in who she does not trust. When we get to Port Mali, I'll have a chat with the captain. I think I'll have a chat with the lady. I would like to accompany you with that chat with the captain. Uh, just so that we... Uh... Get some, get extra perspectives on it. The medical officer near us nods. And then he looks over at Taryn and goes, well spotted. Taryn's just going to blush and go, <clears throat> thank you. <clears throat> um... If it's um, possible, uh, could, could uh, I join you guys when you go to the Argonaut? Neuros glances across at the captain and just shrugs your call, captain. I think... Since you, I don't know enough about you. I need. We should. We should have a sit down. We should have a cup of coffee. We should. We we should we should talk to each other. Um, you you do already know a lot about what's going on with our uh, higher up decisions, I guess. Uh, so it would make sense. But I I want to know more about you before I necessarily trust you with this one. <laughs> Taryn just kind of um, swallows and looks a bit sheepish and goes, mm -hmm. um, um, okay. How, how's about I grab grab a little teapot, take it up to uh, the crow's nest, and we we just we just have a chat for a bit. Uh, yeah, sure. Um. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um. Shall I? Shall I go up there now? I'll grab the teapot. Oh, okay. I'll meet you. Meet you there. Um. And so, mm. Helen goes and climbs to the crow's nest. Uh, when Taron leaves, uh, he is going to. Uh, look to Neros and say to him. Do you have any inclination as to who that person is? Nearest is going to look at Tar where Taran went and went. I believe all I know is that that was one of the crew we hired with you. I That's not what I meant. I meant the name, this uh, Begatal fellow. I didn't mention the name. Oh, wait, didn't you? I oh. specifically didn't translate the name. <laughs> oh, oh, bollocks. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. We'll just okay, cram and see that bit. <laughs> <laughs> in, in that case, I'm going to not write that name down in my notes. Uh, so, any idea who, who it might, who this person could be that we should not trust? He f sort of gets a slightly contemplative look on his face and goes, All I can say is the poor girl 
begged for help when she came aboard. That orc that was with her was, even though dressed in the livery of Picard, was not one of her retainers. Um, all I can say is it could be anyone at this stage. I don't know who would try to kidnap a noble woman during the middle of an invasion, but whoever it is, is either brave enough or bold enough to continue doing so well and truly after she's escaped, because I would not want to upset one of the high houses of Picard. And they seem to be doing their damnedest to do just that. Kajiri's going to stroke his chin. He's going to be like, okay, um, you get some rest, I'm going to get some tea. And Ooh. he's going to try and find a tea. He, he's assuming there is a teapot on board. <laughs> <laughs> he's so civilized. It takes a bit of searching, but he'll eventually find one. On his way towards his bed, Neros wakes up flaily and sends him up to watch. Excellent. Okay, so, um... I, wait, but if Flaley is on deck, Bajiri is taking this opportunity to learn his name. <laughs> <laughs> the very young soldier sort of walks up on deck, sort of scratching at his eyes. It appears that he's been trying to get some sleep. And sort of looks around a little confused as to exactly what he's meant to be watching. <laughs> and shrugs and starts to walk up towards the front where you are. I, uh, but Jerry's just going to like lock eyes with him, looking up as, as he has to do it as he's so short. And he's going to be like, <laughs> I've not learned your name yet, and that is ve very bad of me. What is your name? <laughs> he seems a little bit surprised at that and goes Hawkins James Hawkins, Captain James Hawkins You're doing well, kid and he's going to pat him on the back and leave him on lookout uh, I, He's but sure he's got like a teapot in one hand <laughs> he's, he's carrying the teapot with his tail <laughs> with like some some cups and saucers in one hand, with like, like in both of his hands, and he's gonna pat him on the back with one of his feet and just keep going. <laughs> like it. He just scratches his head, sort of watching you go, and then turns to just lean on the railing and stare out out the front of the ship. <laughs> hey, that's where I am as well. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, <laughs> so, someone write the name down before I forget, please. James Hawkins, isn't it? Is that right? Yep. I think it is. Okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, stop it, I'll do that. Ah. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, oh, but Jury's gonna join Taran in the crow's nest. <laughs> Darren's been sitting there waiting. For like ages. <laughs> uh, Taryn's just going to be sat there kind of like, like curled up, not curled up into a ball, but like, you know, kind of hugging his knees, um, kind of slightly rocking, going, we'll be fine, we'll be fine, we'll be fine, we'll be fine, <laughs> like that. Maybe sat up slightly rocking, but yeah, that's kind of the gist. 
when, when Bajiri gets up there, uh, he sits down cross-legged, laying the tea set out, and pours the tea for Taran, and just says, So, uh, what's your story? Uh, uh, well, um, um, well, I, it just kind of turned out that I couldn't stay at home anymore, um, so, so I needed to go somewhere else, um, <clears throat> and, um, I just kind of ended up here. So wh why, that. <laughs> why couldn't you stay at home? And also, I just want to note that Bajiri's left all of his stuff, like weapons included, uh, at the base, well, in his, um, in the captain's quarters, just so that he is literally as unassuming and as defenseless as he can, just just to like reassure Taran a little bit. Uh, Dee's gonna inquire about why they had to leave their home. Um, Taran's going to like eye the jury for a while and determine, try and determine whether he feels he's safe enough. Um, he's gonna start out by saying, um, uh, uh, well, it's uh, just, um, it wasn't really, uh, very, very safe for me anymore. Bajiri's gonna take a sip of his tea. Pinky outstretched. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say, and the reason for that? <laughs> <laughs> um... Karen is going to be silent for a while. Um, sheepishly look up at Bajiri and be like, um, uh, can, can you promise that what I tell you um, will stay between us? As long as it doesn't endanger uh everyone else here then of course if it does endanger everyone else here then i will gladly come up with an elaborate lie if you really want <laughs> for why i am uh, for why we must deal with hunters assassins or various other people who might wish to destroy the whole crew uh, well um i don't think it would uh, actually ever come to that i don't i don't think they'd got the resources to um, come after me now um, but actually um, I'm my, my real name's not actually Taryn um, it's um, it's it's Ishtar um, and uh, I'm not actually a boy I'm, I'm actually a girl um, uh, yeah yeah um, and where I grew up was not exactly the safest place for a girl. Um, so when I kind of got this old, it seemed sensible to um to uh, leave. But Jury's gonna take a sip of his tea. <laughs> Pinky's still outstretched. <laughs> 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 and he's going to uh, can I have the spelling for the, for the name please also so I could write it down because yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ishtar okay yeah so so you want you had to leave for a better safer life and you decided to join a, sh uh, a ship such as this well um so when I was in Freeport, I, I kind of got a, like a, a labouring job, but I, I wasn't, well, very good at it. Um, and I was looking for more work, and this was um, the only thing I found. But, but Jerry's going to nod and he's going to be like, well, uh, <laughs> I mean, 
at least you're with a good crew. You could have got on with some like really bad people and whew. either way, your secret's safe with me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And since I can trust uh, since you trusted me enough to me that, well, I don't see an issue with you coming along to f find out more about this person we shouldn't trust. Thank you, it, was, it seemed a kind of interesting and I'm just maybe, maybe a bit too nosy. So, so, um, sorry, I missed everything there. My uh, Discord sorry. cut out. That's fine. <laughs> Taron was basically just, just saying, oh, sorry. <laughs> Ishtar was basically just saying uh, that she was basically just being nosy and that's why she wanted to come along. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically really the only reason. <laughs> but Jerry's gonna, gonna chuckle and just be like, eh, I can't blame you. Like, I, I want to know what's going on. Um, but this... I, I would want to discuss... Um, what what do you think of this, our gunnery chief? Um, well, he's, he seems nice enough. Uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to be fighting him. Because um, he's kind of scary with a gun, but um, um, yeah, he seem, I, seems nice. I don't really feel that I, uh, I know him very much, but he's always been nice to me. Yes, uh, okay, well, um, he, he, is, he is a bloody good shot, and Jerry drinks more tea, and uh, <laughs> at, at, this, at this point, he's just like, he's gonna wait to drink any more tea before Taryn has some. Oh, okay. <laughs> Taryn's just gonna chug the whole thing of tea because he's like very nervous, or she's very nervous still. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Vegeta's just gonna be like, so since he's our only informant on this Burkard, it's Burkard, right? Yeah. Burkard. <laughs> Burkard. Um, since he's our only informant on that place, um. I feel like it might be worth trying to find another informant as well, just in case. Um, I, I uh, feel um, this is probably the appropriate time to tell you um, I'm, I'm also from the card. Um, I just, I didn't know what the code was. <laughs> I'm so glad you didn't know that. Cute. But he's just, just, just going to think for a second and be like, Huh. <laughs> right. Okay. He's gonna put his, his teacup down, and he's he's gonna start like stroking his chin with his foot, just thinking and like. So, have you ever seen him around Bacard before? Um. Well, no. Uh, I didn't really um get out much when I was there. I kind of just stuck around um, the building. I did stores and I went to the market um, and that's about it, really. So, ah. um, okay. Sorry. I'm going to... This, this has been a nice chat. I'm going I'm to see if maybe I can find out more about how he knew what this code was. Um... But thank you for your honesty towards your captain. It's it's nice to know that there are people here I can trust and that can trust me. And he sips oh, um... his tea with his <laughs> pinky outstretched. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, yeah, I I I'm going to trust you too, if if that's okay. <laughs> did, did, did she just ask <laughs> permission to not trust? socially aware, by the way. <laughs> Sorry. I had a feeling. <laughs> what? Sorry, what did you say? I had a feeling that she wasn't that socially aware. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> At this point, Bajiri, you kind of realize that you've run out of tea. <laughs> Bajiri gasps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
and he's, he's just gonna be like, well, um, James is now on watch, so I think you should get some rest, and I will do the same. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, do do I need to go back on watch, or can I can I go to bed now? No, you you can you can sleep unless you want to stay up and talk to James, who is our friend who you bu you bullied into combat. And <laughs> he's gonna laugh. <laughs> oh, do, do you mean the the flailing one? Yeah, 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 Flaley. <laughs> Flaley. Oh, his name is James. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I might say hello on my way down. Uh, yeah, sure. And with that, Bajiri's gonna scoop up all the tea stuff, carrying it in his various limbs, and he's gonna descend to the crow's nest and head back to bed. Uh. Karen's going, or Ishtar, I don't know what to call myself now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I suppose Karen, because only Bajiri knows. Um, so Taryn's going to climb down, um, wave at Flaley or James even, say hello, good night, um, thanks for taking over, watch, and head off to bed. You get a short wave from James from up the front. And then he resumes just staring at the ship. <laughs> <laughs> that message is directed to, to some people in particular. Oh, hang on. I'm baffing around. <laughs> <laughs> but Jury is now going to interrogate the entire crew. <laughs> <laughs> The rest of the watches seem to go about as boringly as you can expect when the only thing to stare at is the ship in front of you. And night turns into day. <laughs> please, please tell me Idric is actually singing that. Yes, that, that is the song that Idric has been singing for most of... Uh, it's a folk song from where he comes from. Yep. <laughs> One of the sailors comes out of the shared sleeping space that they've all been in, just gives you the filthiest look and goes, could you not have shut up for at least a minute? <laughs> and then stumbles <laughs> off to the mess. <laughs> Edric will actually keep humming the song as he walks to the mess hall. <laughs> <laughs> the poor sailor has spent most of the night like this. <laughs> and as soon as one of his companions starts humming along with you, he thumps him. <laughs> <laughs> as the day goes on you resume most of your tasks that you've been doing mostly it's going to be repair work there's still quite a lot of damage to rebuild at least most of the ship <laughs> bingo you slept in the engine room um combination of the fact that you like the sounds and the other fact that you really wanted to keep an eye on the boiler that seemed to be making a higher and higher pitched hissing noise at you. Uh oh. That doesn't sound good, right? <laughs> <laughs> can I investigate it? <laughs> yes, you can. Uh, that will be an intelligence engineering if you have it. Uh, Miracy, the kitten has slept like on you most of the night except for a small oh. section at about three o'clock in the morning where it went absolutely bananas raced around the whole ship and pissed people <laughs> off <laughs> fuck yeah um i'm both inordinately happy in character and out of character right now 
Oh, Very and just on as the an update, whistle. my real life cat has just run off with some of my quite expensive jewellery because he felt Ooh. like he needed to be mentioned again. <laughs> <laughs> and they never saw the jewellery again. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiot. Damn it. I completed the song. <laughs> Uh, 15, was it? 15 from me, yes. <clears throat> you recognise the sound. You've heard it before. Usually not too long before an explosion. Uh-oh! Uh-oh! You've... Uh-oh! Looking at a couple of the dials, it takes you a little while to work it out, but you realise that the pressure in the boiler is just going up. It's not actually bleeding out through the engine like it's supposed to. Uh -oh. You guess that if you don't get some help and get the boiler repaired, that you're going to have to slow down to ease the pressure off the engine. Fiddlesticks! Hmm. Okay. You reckon you've got probably an hour at most before the ah! engine decides to give up? Mm. Okay. I will run upstairs and find whoever I think would be most appropriate to help. Help! <laughs> <laughs> engine exploding! Engine exploding! It's going to go boom and not the good kind of boom! <laughs> A whole bunch of the crew on the ship watch you bolt out, no, stop what panic, they're no, doing, <laughs> and immediately start panicking. <laughs> The jury would like to face palm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, With like perfect synchronization, Neros yeah. also face palms. <laughs> so we have a small problem. A no problem. Nothing to be worried about. We have a small situation. A very minor situation. Mm. It can very easily be handled. I just need some assistance in the engine room. Forthwith. And I will say that to our captain and anybody else who is on deck as well. <laughs> the jury's just like, right. Um, I'm gonna go down there. And I think, uh, Gunner Chief? Yes, of course, Captain. You, you, you could deal with explosions as, 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 as well, quite well, right? Well, I have studied engineering. In that case, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm just gonna, like, march along. <laughs> Um, Bingo, can I get you to roll a communication check? Oh no. <laughs> I'm not so good at those. <laughs> Give me a minute. If you roll three ones, you're going to yell out boom instead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Communication. Oh no, not as bad as that as I thought. As you start to make your way back below deck with the captain and the chief engineer, you notice some of the sailors have started to pull up the um, small little sloop that sits on deck um, as a both a shore and exploring boat and also an escape vessel, and they are getting it ready. <laughs> they have zero faith right now that this ship is not going to go down in a ball of flame. One of them is rushed up to the front of the ship and he's signalling with flags like mad. Well, that's just rude. <laughs> <laughs> We're all going to need more optimism than that! 
Bajiri nods in agreement and is like, Am I, they're right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we should be optimistic about the situation. It'll be fine. A couple of them look at you, Bajiri, and they don't know whether to continue prepping for an evacuation or to just wait it out. They seem to be sort of just edging the... Um, Small yes, boat to the <laughs> edge of the ship and just waiting to the last minute. <laughs> Prepare for an evacuation, anyways. Make sure the civilians are there first. So. <laughs> and I'm underage, so I count as a child, so I get to go first. <laughs> Not until you fix the engine. <laughs> <laughs> right, Roger. I'm not Roger, Roger. I'm Bajiri. <laughs> 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 you make your way down below deck you can now hear a thorough whistling coming from the boiler and it is getting higher and higher pitched it's totally meant to sound like that it just um, needs a little fine tuning it's a bit out of tune yeah I've been singing to it but it hasn't been helping <laughs> Um, for those going to fix it, I'll get you to do a intelligence plus a engineering. Oh, I accidentally managed to brain. <laughs> 18. Radio. I got eight. <laughs> I'm doing. Bingo and Edric work together. Edric, you point out to Bingo exactly what needs to be done from Bingo's end, and you also help from the other side. And between the two of you, you manage to relieve the pressure off the uh, boiler, and it reduces back to a more normal and safe level. Bajiri, the entire time you do what a captain normally does, stand off to the side and supervise. <laughs> nice. And we couldn't have done it without our helpful supervisor. From the sound of it, that's actually a good idea. Oh. <laughs> 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 Look, woman. I have. <laughs> Is that the kitten? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Idrit, you feel that it was safest to have given Jiri something that just didn't actually do anything. You just told him to spin knobs, pull a couple of levers that literally didn't do anything while the engine was being repaired. But the jury's not. He, 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 but literally just just gonna like scratch his face and just be like, D "Don't, don't thank me. I literally did nothing." <laughs> <laughs> you spun that valve very well. <laughs> I wish you said I, that that he spun that knob very well because. <laughs> <laughs> Gracious. <laughs> Right, yo. Crisis averted, and Edric, you're fairly certain that this engine will at least hold together long enough to get you to Port Marley. Captain, we should probably take note that we need a new engine soon. Oh, uh, the first thing that I was going to replace was the sails. Those are useful too, but we kind of need the engine to stay afloat. Pajiri laughs. Sarcasm, my friend. Sarcasm. <laughs> ah. Yeah, I'm not the best at that. Bingo you is both... just being silently happy that he didn't say he needed to replace him. <laughs> Bajiri, Bajiri's going to be like, you both did brilliantly. 
Lee, thank you so much. I'm buying your first drinks when we land on shore. Are you actually underage, though? He he he, he looks at, at Bingo, just like hmm. <laughs> no. He shrugs. Good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> He will thank, um, and he'll say Varric, I apologise, he will thank John <laughs> Varric for his help. Thank you, that was uh, appreciated. Uh, I, I am not so good with the whistlings and the noises, but I'm good with the explosions, but I appreciate this was an explosion we wanted to avoid. At least for now. Yeah. If we ever need it to explode, I know that I'm going to count on you for solving that. Oh, that means so much to me. Thank <laughs> you. You're welcome. You feel safe at this stage to leave the engine as is. And up on deck, it's you've got like a number of the crew sort of like co cocking their ears waiting to hear a potential sound that sounds like an explosion. When Bajiri gets on deck, he he's he's going to who who looks the most afraid? At the moment there's probably Flaley who's sitting in the middle of the raft ready to go. <laughs> he's gonna rest his hand on Flaley's shoulder. And he's gonna be like we, the engine, the engine's fucked. We're gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking bastard! I love it. <laughs> Give me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get you to roll a communication test? <laughs> okay. Although Bajiri is waiting for for his first reaction, and will as so as soon as. Flaley reacts. He he is gonna want to stop him from doing anything stupid, and he's gonna be like, "I'm joking, I'm joking." Uh, I got a total of ten. Oh wait, no, I'm dumb because I need to add things, don't I? Yeah. I got a total of ten. <laughs> <laughs> add all the things. You see the blood rush out of his face, and he looks like he's almost about to faint. Pajiri's gonna cover with both shoulders and be like, I'm joking, it's fine, it's fine. If I, you'll know when I'm not joking. <laughs> <laughs> and he's gonna like gently like slap his cheeks. And be like, you're doing good, you're doing good. Some of the other sailors nearby piss themselves laughing at this. <laughs> you drink, he wore the brown pair today. <laughs> good. <laughs> With the engine now ticking along and crisis averted and the crew somewhat more calmer about the fact that they're not going to be spending the next few weeks trudging through a desert, um, life returns to somewhat normal back on board and you continue learning the different tasks of how to manage a ship of this caliber, how to maintain it, how to do some repairs. And after a few days more travel, the lookout up on the crow's nest bellows out. Port on the horizon, Captain. Uh, when the jury hears this, he's going to be like... Everyone prepare for landing. There We're going to get some more space. We're going to get some grub. Tonight Woo! is a night that we will enjoy. There is non-stop cheering from the crew, and they hurl themselves into getting the ship ready to make a landfall. The jury is very happy just to, like, take in the moment and just see... His crew just 
being so ecstatic as he's behind behind the wheel, just like, ha, ah, this is my life. That's good. <laughs> As you sail in, you fall in line behind the Argonaut, who has slowed down to be almost within shouting distance to escort. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, just force a habit. (laughs) One of the sailors who's signalling with flags nearly jumps clean off the side. At the shout of Bingo's <laughs> shout. <laughs> Hi! It's us! Bajiri is going to hand Bingo, like, the, the nearest random object. And, and just be like, whenever I hand you this, you calm down. I love your excitement, but not all the time. I'll leave it up to the DM what the object is. <laughs> is it the number <laughs> You have looked around for anything that was in reach and one of the sailors has been passing by with some tools and you literally just gr- snatch something out of his hands and you've come away with a spanner. <laughs> but you're going to look at it and he's going to say, a spanner means that you chill. Okay. But don't worry. It's only momentary. I'll let you unchill when we get on the <laughs> port, and then you can have some fun. No explosive fun, just fun fun. And, and do I have to give you back the spanner? You do, but the spanners, like, it, it, it's a secret thing between us now. No, <laughs> no one else can take the spanner for, from between us. Okay. It's, it's, it represents a bond. The secret spanner bond. The secret spanner bond. We, we should have our own handshake. We we should, and it should use the spanner. Yeah. We'll, we'll work on that. We'll, we'll work on that. <laughs> yeah. The sailor who Bingo nearly made jump off the ship is just staring incredulously at the both of you. And is now turned back to looking at the Argonaut uh-huh. and pretending nothing is happening. <laughs> you sail into the harbour of Port Mali. It's a... Largish town, walled, built high on a ridge line, almost at the top of a peak. It's unusual of the cities and towns that exist in this area in that it is the most green you've ever seen. Whereas the deserts and the very, very dry air and the lack of moisture, the constant sandstorms normally make for much harsher and less green covered towns. This one is just covered in trees and life that you just have not seen anywhere else for a long time. What makes it even more unusual is that to maintain that kind of growth in this environment, normally a significant amount of magic and technology would need to be used to maintain shields of some sort to keep the inclement weather, for lack of a better description, from destroying whatever you're trying to grow. But this place doesn't seem to have that. It has just an open harbour and a 
metric ton of greenery inside the walls. A little bit of it outside of it. And as you approaching it closer, you actually see the reason for it in that the harbour of this particular um, place is like the harbours you'd expect to find back in your homelands, in that it is a water harbour. There is a large spring flowing clean out the side of the mountain into a lake. And ships are lowering themselves out of the air and into the lake before coasting up into a central harbour that is well and truly inside the city walls. As you lower into the harbour, you can see why the greenery seems to survive in that you are actually lowering yourself not just into a walled city, but into a what looks like to be a caldera, a crater of a long dead volcano. And the ridges around you protect from any wind and any sandstorms. Nice. Jiri, I'll get you to do a final dexterity sailing check if you're at the helm. Hell yeah. Helm, yeah. Why didn't I go for that? I'm now disappointed in myself. <laughs> you should be. Ooh so that's. So so are my parents. Um, <laughs> that's a 15. You begin lowering the ship and after it dips a little bit faster than you're expecting, you manage to regain control and bring it in for a much smoother landing. It's still a bit of a rough rumble as you first make contact with water and bleed off your speed you skim across like a stone that's been skipped on water and then eventually lose enough speed to sink in and begin coasting in towards the port you remember to keep the ship just high enough out of the water to make sure that you're not taking anything on board below decks Eventually, this is why we batten down the hatches. <laughs> Eventually, you coast in, and the Argonaut in front of you has already begun throwing out lines onto a large wooden dock that extends out into the water, and you pull the vessel up alongside the dock and behind the Argonaut. The crew immediately leap into action and start throwing ropes out to hands that are waiting to receive and tie the vessel up and a gangway is lowered down onto the docks and with that and with the crew done on their end they turn to look at Pajiri for permission to leave <laughs> Pajiri is going to say um, whoever finds me the best tavern, I will buy a drink. And we shall all drink there tonight. Go have fun. <laughs> and he's going to wave his hands. A and... bunch of sailors just leap off the ship. Some of them not even waiting for the gangway to be secured at the other end. <laughs> I I'm going to leap over as well. I'll the... wave to them and smile. Bye! <laughs> the refugees that are on board with you make their way onto the deck with whatever belongings they can manage to carry with them and sort of look around a bit confused about what to do until a rather official sort of man in 
dark robes and a matching cap makes his way down with some attendants and speaks to them and gestures further up closer to land he then looks up at the ship and shouts is the captain still on deck but Jerry's gonna gonna like since his height is quite small compared to everyone else around him he's gonna be like yep I'm here just like raise his hand so that they can see him uh, whilst they're on the land it takes a second but then the Captain eventually realizes that he's looking at someone that's not of standard height and shouts out, permission to come aboard. Permission granted. He makes his way up the gangplank and immediately busies his attendants around to ensure that the deckhands, uh, sorry, dockhands, uh, doing the tasks they need to and sending them on to deal with other ships. And he steps up on board himself with a, what looks like a really large clipboard with a ton of papers on it. And he looks around, looks at the damage and then turns to look for the captain, sort of looking at a few crew members before settling on yourself, Bajiri and then raising a bit of an eyebrow. Not seen one of your kind here for a while, Captain. Pleasure when to have will, you with us. As, as soon as he says that, but he's going to be like, when was the last time you saw uh, someone like me here? Ah, uh, months at best, probably a bit longer. And I, I'm guessing you don't have any idea where they went? I wouldn't be able to tell you off the top of my head, Captain, but I'm certain that there's somewhere in the logs we might have some record of where they went. At the very least, we might know the name of a ship. That said, I'm going to need your ship name and record of any cargo that you brought with you. I do presume that you were the last of the ships that was from Freeport? Sorry, say again. You cut out. Uh He's going to say, I said, I'm going to presume that you are one of the last of the ships to make it from Freeport. You cut out again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, did. Bear with yep. me. I am going to just jump the server. We're going on a holiday. Alrighty. Hopefully that's a little bit better. Downstairs while this conversation is occurring. Yep. Um, the... Official's going to say, I'm going to presume that you're the last of the ships that made it out of Freeport. Um, well, sort of. <laughs> um, we got attacked by some pirates uh, on the way back whilst we were on the Argonaut, and then we took over their ship, so now this is my ship, and it's called the Cirrus, uh, so there won't be any record of it existing before. Um, but we do have records of all the cargo on board, uh, including every person, I believe, we have named and written down. Uh, right, Mercia? And he looks over. <laughs> She's there proudly holding onto her notebook. Uh, I, I've got everything that's on the ship. Um, not, not necessarily the people and all their details, but I have all, all the things. All of the things. The official looks <laughs> at you. Behind you, Mer Mercia, Neros face palms. <laughs> it seems to be muttering something to himself but the official takes the papers and starts going through them cataloguing everything and raises an eyebrow slightly at some things <laughs> and then he hands it back and makes a couple of notes in his ledger I will speak to the captain of the Argonaut. He's been seeing to the refugees that have been disembarking from his vessel. And I will summon the elders. And unfortunately, I will need to rope in those northern ambassadors. But having a prize of war is definitely going to do us well. Okay. 
Can I pipe up, as he says, the northern uh, ambassador? Yep. The northern ambassadors? Which countries have you represented here? He looks across at you and sort of sighs. With all the tensions up north, they've got ambassadors from almost every nation floating around this region. But the ones that decided to set up shop here were Bacard, Ginnereth, and there's one or two from the south off the top of my head. It's Hathad. That is very good to know. Thank you very much. Idrik is actually going to make a little... Oh, you dropped out there. Idrik is going to make a little curtsy as he thanks the guy. <laughs> the official sort of shakes his head and finishes taking some of his notes. And then he turns back to Ubijiri and goes, I'll waive the dock fee. Normally there is a charge for landing here in Port Mali, but as you brought our friends and families from Freeport and the fact that you've even gone so far as to capture a prize from the Shayek school and their slaving bastards, I will more than happily pay for it myself. Enjoy your stay That's in Port Mali. If there's anywhere that you would like to go, I can have one of my assistants point you in the right direction. They will be working here for the next few hours. That is very generous of you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's, it's, I, I won't forget this kindness quickly. He nods and goes, I hope you don't because I'm now going to have to go and see the ambassadors and I've had enough of them to last a lifetime. Before you go, where can I find the ambassadors for Bakar? Because you mentioned that they were here. He nods and goes, if you really feel the need to speak to them, they've got their uh, large mansion not too far up on the lakeside. And he gestures over the side of the ship. And looking through the bustling docks, you can make out a area of the lakefront that appears to be a lot fancier there's lots of larger buildings um looks like <laughs> <laughs> yep it's a fucking mansion um uh, it's even got a private beach on the back but is it magnificent <laughs> i'll leave that for the people that visit it to judge <laughs> oh it is on <laughs> Can I jump offshore, uh, off the ship, and try and find Lady Alada Dupont on board of the other ship? Yep. So you make your way onto the dock and work your way past the dock hands who are still busying themselves um, with any final lashings and moving on to other ships and their cargoes. As you make your way up towards the Argonaut, you can see that they're still disembarking the larger number of refugees that are on board. Um, in the meantime, those of you still on the Argonaut, I'll get you to roll a perception. On the Argonaut? Oh, sorry, uh, those of you that are on the Cirrus still. A perception with seeing. Thank you. Does that include me oh. if I went downstairs? Uh, <laughs> nope, bingo. You're fine. Okay. Um... I rolled two sixes and a five, which is much better than my three ones earlier. <laughs> um, and the stunt die got a six as well as the other die. <laughs> but I don't think I need to stunt. But, and I get a plus two for seeing. So that's like 12. All right. That's so 19 two. total. And wasn't that legendary? If you've got uh, three sixes, yes. Oh, three sixes. Did I? Yeah. Damn. Right, yeah, that's one, two, three. 
really are. Um, Mircea, Vajiri, and Taran. You're still on deck and with most of the crew now on their way up to looking for the nearest pub that serves something that is not water. Um, you glance around and realize that of the four that you brought on board, only three of the prisoners are still on deck. Motherfucker. Bajiri's gonna go up to the the three prisoners that are, that are still there and be like, where's the other one? They sort of look at each other and then look below decks and uh. look back at the captain and then go, he went to put a broom, but that was a while ago, captain. Sorry, you cut out. What did you say he went to do? He, he went to return a broom back below decks, but oh, he right. that, that was a while ago, Captain. How long ago? And he's going to gesture to whoever's around to go below deck. One of them thinks for a bit and goes, just before we pulled up at port, sir. Okay, well, um, do you have any idea what he's actually gone to do? Because it doesn't take that long to return a broom. No, sir, he, he's not spoken to us very much. Well, thank you for being honest to me. And if it's not honesty, I will cut out your tongues. Uh, and Bajiri's going to head blow deck. You go below decks and in the corridors you don't see anything. The engine's still humming softly. Yeah. <laughs> I did that. But you don't hear anything that's out of the ordinary. Jerry is going to first search the room with the gold. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you make your way down to the very bottom of the ship. Hi. Chucking quick glances <laughs> as you go along. <laughs> Bingo, what have you been doing below deck? I went to get a really big sack from the kitchen that they keep potatoes in and fill it with silver before they took it all away from me. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bajiri, I'm assuming Taryn and Wisp and Mericia are following. Yeah. Uh oh. So, you all walk into the main storage hold of the ship and find. Bingo, literally looting one of the chests, just loading it with silver. Shit! <laughs> this is not what it looks like! But Jerry's just gonna, he's gonna do that, I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed face. Crossing his arms, tapping uh, the ground with his feet, and he's just gonna be like, Bingo. That's not what it looks like! What is it then? But I can tell you what it is not! It is what not! Is it not? It is not me taking silver from the loot. Bingo, I can see you taking silver from the loot. <laughs> <laughs> I can see how it may appear that that is what I am doing, but that is not what I am doing. Bingo. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> uh, 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 I like you, Bingo. Put it back. But but it's so shiny and and I want to buy things. What do you want to buy? All the things that go boom and more coffee. I need more coffee beans. 
I will put that on our shopping list, okay? Can I get things that don't explode? Yes, yes we can. But you have to promise me you won't do this again. And you have to help me find someone who's gone missing. Okay. Can I just pour the sack back in? <laughs> <laughs> okay. One of the prisoners has gone missing. We need to Which find him. Uh, I'll the find one who was... uh, Go for it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Which one? Uh, the, the one who didn't talk very much. The one with the scruffy beard. He, he, d did he have a scruffy? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> DM. <laughs> yeah. that, that was both of us just like DM, please help. Putting your heads together because you've. At least some of you have seen the three that you have left. You work out that he was bold. He was on the younger side, but not very young. Definitely not the age of McFaley or Taron. Um, had a bit of a scar over one eye and sort of the scratchings of a beard. Not very well grown. Never the jury it, describes that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, sure, just find, you know the one to find. Aye, aye, Captain. And he's going to turn to the others and be like, "Gang, I think we should split up and look for clues." Aye, aye, roll, Harry. Ah. Just for that, you get to roll advantage on your perceptions. <laughs> Yay! Yay! How does you advantage work in this friend. game? Uh, just roll twice. Okay. Pick your highest score. Um, well, so that would, that. that would be seeing and... Oh, sorry, perception seeing, if you got it. Yep. Can I be Scooby-Doo? Of course. But you not be scrappy. Actually, yeah, I'll be scrappy, dude. <laughs> oh. So, as you search, you split up over the ship and go room to room. Some of you check... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Some of you check wow. the rooms that the captured sa uh, sailors had been using. Some of you um, go and check the engine room just to make sure he's not tampering it uh, with it. Um, Edric, you and... Oh, you're... All... On. I locked the sh uh, I locked the armory when I leave it. Yep. So I have the key dangling around my neck, and I'm not on board. Yep. So the armory is locked, so you can't actually get in there. But you put your ears to the door, and you don't hear any noises in there. And then you get to the side of the ship that got damaged during the fight. Taryn, you are the first to spot it. But Bajiri and Bingo also see the hole high up on the wall that has a patch that they've sort of tried to sort of hammer into place over it. So with spare timbers from down in the hold and so on, it looks like it's been levered away. And then pulled yeah. back into place. Bastard. Taryn, you see the a couple of threads of cloth sort of caught in the timber. Uh, well, Taryn's gonna go up and like study them, see if he can see anything else, and then point them out to Captain Bingo. Um, are they of a colour that matches? 
they matched the color of the uniforms that the sailors had been wearing. Okay. And it's a big indicator he's gone out. Yeah, and from what you can tell, it looks like you could pretty easily pull those boards away and create a hole in the hull that leads to the outside. Um, after pointing it out to the captain, uh, Karen's going to suggest that they open it up themselves and go out to see where it leads and see where they see if they can see the slave from there or where he might have gone. Bajiri is going to nod, uh, nod and agree with that and he's going to say, I'll, uh, I'll rip it off. One of you who's faster, go back up deck and see whether there's any sign of him uh, relatively near. And he's going to start trying to pry, the way, pry away at the, the stuffs. I'll get you to roll a straight strength. Might if you have it. Yeah. And who's going back on up on deck to do some uh, spotting? I am three foot tall, so I've got very little legs. <laughs> so I would suggest that I go. Taryn goes up. <laughs> I will not dispute that. <laughs> so Taryn's going to run on up to the deck, um, go to the appropriate side of the ship, yep. lean over and see what he can see, or she can see. So I'll reuse your current score, which was 22. So you scan everything. You know exactly who you're looking for, and yep. you know which side of the ship that you believe that they jumped out. It takes you a little bit, but you look out past some of the nearby ships that are still coming and going, mm -hmm. and see in the water approaching one of the beaches on the other side of the lake. What looks like someone's swimming. Cannon! <laughs> <laughs> you hear a tiny voice from in the back of your head. Yes. In imitating bingo, uh, Taryn just shouts, or more like screams, Captain! A bit like that. Um, and... <laughs> Hope, hoping he can hear from below wherever he is, um, and is kind of Did you like somebody on deck down to get run down and tell the captain what she sees whilst keeping an eye on the slave. You've ripped the boards off the hole and managed to stick your head out to have a look, and what you see is pretty much a hole that's not very far above the waterline. And quite capable to have been jumped out of as the vessel came into the lake. Right at that moment, you hear Taryn scream. <laughs> Your name. Would I be able to see the person from there? Closer to the waterline, you would struggle. Your almost on par with the dock that's at that um, roughly same height. So you'd be looking past deckhands and dockhands um, feet as they make their way about their business. Occasional cart as it's carting some of the trade goods that are coming into the city. It would take you a lot longer, but if Taryn was leaning over the side and pointing, you'd probably just make out as the shape of a sailor in a very familiar uniform pulls themselves out of the lake and starts pegging it into the city. Well, okay, well, in that case... Um... Bajiri is going to... So he could easily, like, pull himself through the hole onto the dock, right? Yep. He's, he's going to do that, and what, leaving his 10-foot pole behind him. Slightly heartbreaking, but it's in the ship, so it's fine. And he's going to shout to Tar uh, Taran, since they're on board, and Wisp as well, to get, get into the city, get that guy. He, he's not going to escape us. 
Wait, sorry, were you saying that Taryn's going with you or staying on on the ship? Sorry. Uh, he he's going to shout for Taryn and for Wisp to give back up as he oh, right, okay. skedaddles to chase after them. Cool. Uh, Taryn's going to turn around, leg it off the deck and get to the dock as quickly as she can to follow after the captain. With that, I will jump back to Edric, who has been pushing his way through the crowd to get onto the Argonaut, or at least try and find someone in the crowd. Um, Edric, I will get you to roll a perception yourself, seeing. That's perception seeing. Okay, I don't have seeing. That would be uh, math. <laughs> <laughs> 14, I think. Wait, I'm going to just do... Uh, 9, 12, 14, yep. Yep. Yay, I mathed correctly. So you make your way up to where the gangway of the Argonaut is. You have looked carefully at everyone as you've made your way there. You don't see Lady Alara anywhere, but you do see the captain of the Argonaut as he's just coming down the gangway. Captain. Captain glances up and spots you and gives you a friendly smile and he goes, good to see you again, lad. That storm had us a bit worried. Good to see you too. too. It was thanks to Bajiri and his pretty good well, sailing skills that we still had a chance against that storm. He's a very good helmsman and I'm looking forward to working with him. He's a good captain. He really made sure that everybody supports him as a captain as well, so... That, that he, is good to hear. Well. Um, what I wanted to ask is you had lady... Uh, that You had that lady. Uh, yes. Lady DuPont. Um, I believe most of the refugees are off board already. They are being resettled. The lady herself was uh, escorted up into the city already. I believe she's on her way to the ambassador. She is on her way to the ambassador already? Yeah, the uh, ambassador... Uh, well, to be honest, most of the embassies appear to be well aware of the attack. We were, after all, some of the last to arrive. As soon as word arrived that the Argonaut was here, the ambassador had some men waiting for the lady to disembark. They've escorted her safely up towards the embassy. In that case, I'm going to have to go there. I'll make a, st a stop by the ship first, though. So that's what I'm saying to the captain, and then I head off and walk back towards our ship, so the, the Citrus. Yep. Yes, <laughs> Citrus. <laughs> Dang, damn it. <laughs> um, I will probably wind us up soon, Maricia. Thank you. Because I believe some of us have a lot to do. <laughs> yeah. Burning <laughs> <laughs> that at the candle at all ends and all yeah. angles. And, yeah. So, to be honest, I actually might wind it up roughly about now because this is a good spot to put it. That's a fucking cliffhanger and a half. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and before we get to that, I will say that you will all level up after this, so you will be level two. If you need any help, pop me messages. What, what does that How do like, entail? Work in this game? Yeah, I was going to say, I have literally no clue. <laughs> It that... means we get stronger. Yep. Yay! I will pop messages onto the Facebook. 
Oh, fantastic. Radio. Um, yeah, I'll leave it there with the sailor making his way into the city to try and escape. The refugees are now disembarking and being found safe places to stay. And the Argonaut and the Citrus are <laughs> now alongside. Um, Bajiri, as you jump onto deck, a attendant spots you and waves you over. Um, sort of puffing. He seems to have been literally running from ship to ship and goes, Captain, Captain, a moment of your time. One moment is all you get because there's a guy I'm chasing. <laughs> Your ship will take a few days to repair, but we've uh, been told to make all haste with that, and the elders would like to see you at your earliest convenience. Okay, thank you for the message. Uh, I hope you have a nice day. Um, also, make sure that the three guys that are probably uh, that are basically prisoners on my ship, could you do me a favor and just make sure that they're with someone that has make sure that the, the medical officer is keeping care of them um i'm gonna i'm gonna have a nice day and he's gonna like pat, <laughs> pat him on the back and just like yeet <laughs> <laughs> this flustered rushed off his feet like apprentice is just confused as hell but sort of shrugs and then runs up on deck to go speak to neros and then runs off somewhere else. Also to clarify, Bajiri totally said yeet in character. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's where it came from. And with that, you've all survived to get as far as Port Marley. Yay! The character <laughs> death is going to start next session, right? <laughs> <laughs> We'll see how long it takes. Level. <laughs> yeah, level two is as high as we get, guys. That's it. I'll just stop the recording. Well, it's easy to TPK in this game. Just blow 